Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite, and Adobe just recently released an update to Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom. Now, you know that I don't really use Lightroom much, but I do use Adobe Camera Raw, and this new feature is so little, but it's so big at the exact same time. Let's jump into Adobe Camera Raw, and I'll show you exactly what this feature is. So right now I'm in Adobe Camera Raw and it doesn't look any different than what it looked like before the update. It actually looks the exact same. Actually, if you have this on automatic updates, you would never know that anything changed. That's what I really enjoy about the Adobe CC subscription model is that they're constantly updating things and innovating and making things better. So as cameras come out, instead of just updating camera models like they used to do, they're now updating camera models and putting in and sneaking in these little features. So this new feature is huge but so small. The only place you're gonna find it is if you go into your preferences. Right now, I've got a couple of raw files open, as you can see here. So I'm gonna to go to these preferences, and in the preferences, you're gonna see something down here called raw defaults. Here's where you get to basically outline exactly what happens with your raw files when they come into Adobe Camera Raw. And it's very similar to what happens in Lightroom. I'm just speaking on Adobe Camera Raw's behalf. So right here where it says master, this is basically, you can see the Adobe default. The Adobe default standard is basically nothing is gonna happen to your image and it's your profile is gonna be set to Adobe color, okay? But you can change that. So you can change it to have a camera settings basis or what I think is even more important here is the preset. And in the presets here, you can define an exact preset that will be applied to all of your images when they get opened up. So what that means is that you can get rid of some of the mundane things. So in my new raw GPS presets, I have this one here called total. And basically that is a automatic tone adjustment. It's got sharpening, it's got noise reduction and all of the lens corrections done for me in one click with my preset. But now the great thing is I can point my camera to have this done on all my images as they come into Adobe Camera Raw automatically. It's really quite awesome. So if I do this, if I just press this total tone, sharpen, noise, lens correction, and just press okay, it's going to go by a master setting here. So what that means is that everything that comes into Adobe Camera Raw is going to get this preset on it. Okay, so I'm going to press okay. You'll notice that there's a slight difference to this photo than there was before, right? That's because all the auto tones have been done here. If we pop on over into our noise reduction, noise reduction and sharpening has been done automatically. And I also have my lens corrections done automatically that I predefined in that preset. And it's going to happen on every single one of these photographs. It's automatically going to do all of that stuff for me. So I don't have to worry about going in and doing it because I already set it to do that in that preset. Now, this might be great for some of you, but you might be thinking to yourselves, well, I have multiple cameras and I want different presets for different cameras. And that's okay. You can do that here as well. If we go ahead and we open up the preferences dialog, we'll set this master to Adobe default. But then down here, we're going to use defaults specific to a camera model. So here you can see that several different raw files here. There's one from a Canon EOS 6D. There's one from an A7R2 and from a Sony A7R3. That means that I can go into this 6D and I can pick a different preset to go along with this. I already have this one set right here because that's where it was before because that's what I knew to select, but I can change that preset to anything I want. So I can say, okay, let's just change this to, um, let's just go desaturated contrast or turquoise and red. Okay, so that we'll use that creative one for that EOS 6D and we'll say create default. Then for the A7R2, let's choose uh, just something really crazy. Let's just do curve and do cross process, create default. And then we'll go here and we'll go to the A7R3 and we'll make that the, uh, the normal one that we had here for that GPS preset total. Okay. And then I'll press create default and I'll press okay. So it automatically read those and it applied that. So because these were from the A7R2, it's going to create that ugly cross process look. I'm not saying I like it. But what I wanted to show you here is that there's a difference between what was brought in from the A7R3, between what was brought in from the A7R2, and what was brought in from the Canon 6D, okay, which would be this image right here. So let's go back over to those preferences. I'm going to go ahead and delete these. So I'm going to show you, just press delete default, delete default, and delete default, okay? And then we'll press OK. So I'm going to cancel out of here and make sure all this stuff goes away. So cancel all changes. Yes. I'm going to bring these back in. I'm going to show you the preset that you should kind of be thinking about or presets that you could be thinking about that would make your life easier. Okay. So the types of presets that I would consider doing are presets that make your life easier. Okay. The thing that do things that you always do when you come into Adobe camera Raw. one of the things that I routinely do, I press auto on my images. Why? Because it automates the contrast for me. And then I can dial in the best look for that photo. So I use it as a way to just set things up. Okay. Then we can go and we can change this. Uh, we can change our profile. Maybe we want that to be Adobe landscape. Okay. Then we'll uh, pop over here to our noise reduction. One of the sharpening methods that I do is about right here. 
and then I press Alt or Option and get that masking in just right, which is usually about the 60% area, and then a mild uh, luminance adjustment with a bigger color noise reduction. Okay, so that's what I would consider doing there. And then popping over to our lens corrections, putting on chromatic aberration reduction, and if you want, enable profile corrections. So from here, we would create a preset for this that has done all of these things. So we'll go over to our presets, and then if we click on our new preset here, with this new preset, what do I want to call it? Well, I'm going to change this here. So if you see right here where it says default, change it to anything that was modified. So what was modified? Well, our profile was modified. Our exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks were adjusted. But this is what we're going to do here. Turn all of these off. Turn all these off. Turn off the vibrance. Okay. And then down here where it says auto, uh, apply auto tone adjustments. That's what we want to click. It's to make sure that every image that gets brought in here gets its specific automatic tone adjustments. Okay. So let's change this and we'll call this um, example for tutorial. Basically what happens now is it's going to set the profile to the Adobe landscape pro profile, which is going to be more on the higher color side. It's going to make all the auto tones and auto adjustments happen to my image. It's going to sharpen my image, reduce the noise on my image and also do color noise reduction. Then it's going to pop on over here and it's going to reduce the chromatic aberrations and the lens profile corrections. Okay. So I'll press okay on this. Why did I show you that? Well, I'm showing you basically how to build a really good solid preset that you could use to have all of your images automatically open. Now I know the caveat to that is that, you know, one preset can't rule them all. That's true. But that preset, because it's doing very automatic mundane things can be a huge time saver in your workflow. I mean, huge time saver in your workflow. And what I showed you there is pretty much what this total preset is in the GPS presets that I've created last month. So I'll go ahead into my preferences dialog, and then I'm going to come down here to where it says raw defaults. And I'm just going to set the master here to choose a preset, and then I'm going to go to user presets. And then I have that example for tutorial. Now that's going to be a master setting. So it's going to do that for every camera model that comes in. Okay. So I'm going to turn this off so that we don't have camera specific models going on and then press. Okay. So that means every image that's brought in here is going to get that treatment. And you see that it automatically updates this. Now, where do I see this being beneficial to use specific camera model differences? Well, where I would see that is I do a lot of infrared photography. So here you could basically set it up for what your infrared camera is to automatically set the profile, which anyone who has gone through our clear course would know that that is really instrumental for IR workflow. And then you, any preset that you'd want uh, attached to that. Basically, you'd have to set the preset that you create would be selecting the profile that you want and then any other settings that go along with that. So this new feature is very small, but it's huge in perspective here on how much it helps your workflow. I wouldn't necessarily do this with creative presets. I would do it with a preset that does simple, ordinary, mundane things that's going to speed up your workflow. My name is Blake Rudis. If you like this, please comment on it, share it, like it, tell a friend, especially a friend that you want to help. Uh, if you have a friend that you don't necessarily like and you want to see them slow their workflow down, don't show them this tutorial. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it.